Wow, it's a bit different than a skills class, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Feedback is more than a skill. It's a superpower. And I'm here today to show you how and why it can, it can become your secret weapon. It has the capacity to foster deep connections, cultivate compassion, and increase the sense of unity in organizations. I train people in giving and receiving feedback for living, but there's something that my colleagues and I have been doing wrong. For decades, we have been training thousands of people all around the world in how to foster strong feedback cultures, where feedback is given in all directions and actually used to improve job performance. But research has shown that 59% of feedback is ineffective. It either does nothing or makes things even worse. A few years ago, I had a meeting with my manager. Nothing special. It was just about to update him about a project I was working on. As we were about to conclude the meeting, he just said that he wanted to discuss something else with me. All of a sudden, his tone of voice changed. He looked at me and said, people find you negative. People? Who? And how many? My colleagues? And, and what did I say and when? My head was spinning. My eyes were getting wet and my jaw clenched. What follows what a, was a painful attempt of clarification. I mumbled a few questions, trying to get an opportunity to talk to the people, but that request was denied. Instead, I was sent home with a task to reflect on something that I could not recall doing. That day, I left work deeply confused, insecure, and heartbroken. I never felt so disconnected from my work or my colleagues. That day, feedback made things worse for me. As a leadership skills trainer, I hear many stories like this one. Uh, so people are yelled at in front of the teams, feedback that is hidden in a condescending question like, were you also planning on adding some visuals to your presentation? <laughs> or feedback that is only given in emails or chats and sometimes even only behind a person's back. Do you all recognize that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but despite all this, 87% of employees are looking for ways to improve. So we want feedback and we need feedback. It's the foundation of individual and professional performance. So what is it that us educators need to change in our approach to feedback training to get to thriving feedback cultures? We need to invest more time, train everybody in the organization and acknowledge its full potential. Let's dive deeper into each of those. Most feedback trainings are part of a bigger leadership development program. Or sometimes they are designed as standalone single workshops. But that is not enough. We need to invest more time. Feedback is a highly, or giving feedback is a highly complex skill. You do not need to only know and be highly aware of what you are saying. You also need to take into consideration the needs of the feedback receiver. You need to be empathetic and very clear in your message. It's almost literally like speaking another language. And have you ever heard about somebody learning German in 60 minutes? Ich glaube nicht. <laughs> I have a question for you. And, and if the answer is yes, me, I would like to see your hand, okay? Who of you has received feedback training? Should be some hands here. Well, congratulations, you might be seen as a high potential. Because that is for whom most feedback trainings have been designed. People in current or future leadership roles. Managers, managers-to-be, supervisors, business students. No? 
of course, in those trainings, participants are trained in taking into consideration the feedback receiver. Yeah, we train about the right timing and also about the consent. But have you ever heard about somebody saying no to their manager when they get the question, can I give you some feedback? This is what AI suggests people look like when they get that question. <laughs> and with 59% of feedback being ineffective, we can assume that most people are not open towards the unsolicited advice of their managers. And neuroscientific research confirms that unexpected feedback stresses us out. And when our brain is under stress, the capacity to process information is very limited. And in order to change our behavior, which is the goal of feedback, we need to be able to process information. So we need feedback, we want feedback, but we fear it. Life sucks sometimes. So instead of us trainers wasting more time in training managers and how to scare even more people off when they give feedback, we need to shift our focus on training everybody in the organization how to ask everybody for feedback. If we're training everybody, it will create strong feedback cultures and addressing many of the challenges we're experiencing currently with giving and receiving feedback. And we'll make it more effective. Because think about it, when you start asking for feedback, you're in charge. You're in charge of when you receive feedback, about what you receive feedback, and from whom. It increases your sense of control, and that alone will reduce the stress response. My husband is Mexican. And that means that throughout the past 16 years, I had to fly every now and then to Mexico. I know my life is very hard. But to be fair, I'm afraid of flying and it's a 14 hour flight. Yeah. So every tiny movement freaks me out. And with every turbulence, I would just close my eyes, squeeze my husband's hand and start breathing like I would be in labor. <laughs> Only to hear the pilot saying after what feels like an eternity that the seatbelt signs are on because we're flying through a turbulence. Oh really, I didn't notice. <laughs> this is a picture of us when we were flying last time, a few months ago. Shortly after we took this picture, the plane took off and the pilot was doing the standard welcoming speech, but this time I noticed a change. She said, we're expecting some minor and major turbulences along the way, but nothing to worry about. Our crew will get you through this as comfortably as possible. You know what? It worked. My husband's hand left the plane unharmed. <laughs> of course, I'm not freed from my fear of flying, but it did help me to feel a little bit prepared. I felt a little bit more in control. And this is similar with feedback. When you ask for it, you are prepared. You're prepared to take in maybe some kind of a turbulence, a critique or suggestion that you didn't expect. But because you're in the pilot seat, you're ready to navigate through this and use this for your journey ahead. And there's another advantage when we start asking everybody, uh, when we start ask, training to be, uh, when we start training everybody in the organization to ask everybody for feedback. It increases the feedback frequency. Because we want feedback and we want it often, but our managers often do not have the time. And I'm going to tell you a secret. Managers are human too. And feedback should not go from top to down anyways. It should go all directions. Your customers, guests, colleagues, colleagues from other departments, they all have valuable insights. And when we encourage everyone to ask for feedback, we are transforming the organization into a learning focused environment where innovation and growth are part of the daily routine. 
So we need to take more time to train people and we need to start training everybody in giving feedback. But what we also need to do is we need to stop to see feedback exclusively as a tool for performance evaluation. It is so much more than that. It's a true superpower in building connections. Yes, 87% of employees are looking for improvements on how to improve their job performance, but there's one thing we're all looking for as well. Meaningful relationships, also at work. Research has shown that our brain perceives the workplace primarily as a place of social interaction and that the quality of those interactions affects deeply our well-being. We've all experienced this during COVID firsthand. That's also why we're often shying, shying away from giving feedback because we want to keep it friendly. Another famous social neuroscientific study by Harvard professor Matthew Lieberman has shown that social pain in the brain is the same as physical pain. And by social pain, we, we mean the feeling of rejection, exclusion from, from the people around us. And I can tell you, feedback has a lot of potential to create social pain. So that means that our brains are hardwired to protect us from that social pain the same way that our brain is hardwired to protect us from physical harm, like touching a hot stove or our, the various reflexes we have. Watch out! Ooh. Well, those built-in protective mechanisms, they explain why we need more training and why it takes <coughs> continuous practice for giving, receiving, and asking for feedback. Because it simply means that we need to overcome our natural instincts. When I started teaching back in 2016, I had a student. Let's call her Sarah. Sarah had a special gift. She could look bored and angry at the same time, a little bit like this. I see her in front of me as if it was yesterday. I was convinced that Sarah hated the classes and that I definitely was not her favorite teacher. But um, instead of checking with her, actually doing what I was teaching her about, I kept my distance. So a few months later, the course was long done, Sarah approached me at an event. She came to me and expressed how meaningful and inspiring my classes were and how much she appreciated my teaching style. So not asking for feedback amplifies misunderstanding and disconnection often for no reason. <laughs> you know, they say feedback is a gift, right? I used to say that all the time. And you also all know what we do with the gifts we never ask for. We take them, we put them somewhere, we forget all about them, and we're definitely not using them. You know what's a gift? Being asked for feedback. A journal, an article in the Neural Leadership Journal suggests that when you ask somebody for feedback, that increases the person's sense of pride and responsibility. And if you think about it, when you ask somebody for feedback, what you're actually saying is, you are the expert here. I value your opinion. I respect you as my colleague. You're sending out an invitation for intellectual and professional dialogue. It's a real opportunity for connecting on a deeper level. So asking for feedback can be your superpower. Don't waste any more time until training programs are rewritten and mindsets have been changed. Get out of your bubble today and start asking for feedback. I've prepared some tips for you. Number one, prepare specific questions. Broad questions like, do you have feedback for me or what do you think of this, will get you broad answers. They're a bit overwhelming. 
Remember, giving feedback is a complicated skill. Pick something specific that you would like feedback on and give the person time to prepare. Give them a heads up. That will increase the chance that you will get actionable input in return. And be prepared to ask some follow-up questions for clarification. You might also need to ask a few times because people might be hesitant to critique your work because they're afraid to hurt the relationship. Remember the fear of social pain we all carry with us. Tip number two. Prepare to feel vulnerable. It takes courage to ask for feedback. Just knowing about the turbulence doesn't take the fear away. But remember that you're in control. And the last tip. Ask different people. We have a tendency to go back to only the people that we know and that we feel comfortable with and the people that think similarly like us. But the real growth starts outside of your comfort zone. If you get feedback from a wide range of sources, your feedback doesn't only get richer, you will also increase the number of innovative and inclusive solutions in the organization. Start with somebody you feel safe around, but you don't usually talk to that often, and then gradually challenge yourself. Remember, everybody has valuable input. If we shift our view on feedback, real magic can happen. And the world is in need of a little magic. We need more kindness, love and compassion now more than ever. And if we start daring to ask for feedback, we take the first steps towards a future of work where these words become actions, where we can safely overcome the spaces between us. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you have been handed <laughs> these beautiful soap bubbles. And in a moment, I will invite you on three to burst this bubble with me, okay? So let today, bursting these bubbles, symbolize our readiness to embrace the openness, vulnerability, and courage it takes for true connection. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you.